Mandy Brown, an account manager in the Officer Personnel Management Directorate of Human Resources Command. Placing officers on assignment is a deliberate process. As you have most likely seen in the Manning Process video, there are seven steps in the distribution cycle. As a review, here are the seven steps that we use in OPMD to distribute officers. This video will focus on the first three steps of the distribution process, and the goal of this video is to inform unit commanders, G1s, S1s, and individual officers about the MER process in order to provide insight on how to maximize the impact of the unit's MER submission. There are four principles to follow when building your MER. First, keep it short. The primary tool for determining which requirements are validated is the Distribution Requirement List, or DRL. The DRL is a product built by the OPMD Plan section. It captures all projected vacancies in Topmas based on the officer's year month available to move and assigns each vacancy an ID number. By listing each vacancy in your unit as a priority, you simply water down the impact of your MER. Second, ensure the commander endorses the priority. Third, base the requested report dates on tangible events. Whether the event is a large exercise, projected deployment, or simply the loss date of the incumbent officer, basing the report date off tangible events will give more meaning to the account manager and as a result, the report date will be used by the assignment officer to identify personnel. By requesting all your vacancies to be filled on the first day of the cycle, you have once again watered down your vote. Most officers are not available to move on the first day of the distribution window. Fourth, use the remarks tab to shed light on anything that is not in Topmas. Topmas is the system of record, but not everything can be captured in Topmas. If an officer is shown as being on hand in your unit in Topmas, but in reality, the officer should be reflected as a loss. By not identifying this discrepancy on your MER, you can hinder your ability to receive a backfill. As I stated earlier, there are seven steps to the distribution cycle. The first step of the distribution process starts with reviewing the officer's year-month availability to move, or YMAT. To help understand this foundational step of the distribution cycle, here is Captain Matt Perez, the current Air Defense Artillery Senior Captain's Career Manager. In order for the MER to accurately depict the unit's true projected vacancies in the upcoming manning cycle, it is essential that the Assignments Division properly updates each individual officer's YMAV and TOPMIS. For AR614-100, the YMAV is an administrative demand signal for officers in a potential must-move status. HRC and other DA assignment agencies reassign officers who are in a must-move status in order to meet Army requirements. So what exactly is a must-move status? An officer in a must-move category is an officer who has a scheduled date eligible for return from overseas or DROS, is completing a military or civilian school course in a PCS status, has met time on station or tour equity requirements, or has met specific officer qualifications in accordance with DAPAM 600-3 and is no longer authorized to serve in that unit. To look at the YMAV report, detailed strength report by Conger and Topmas, G1s and S1s should drill down into the unit's officers by control grade and branch. Look at their YMAV field and ensure that it supports your commander's guidance with respect to the officer development model in DAPAM 600-3. For example, let's look at 2nd BCT 10th Mountain Division or 2-1 Mike, specifically the projected infantry junior captains. If the officer's YMAV is in line with the unit's timeline for the officer, then you can move on to the next officer. If, however, a G1 or S1 feels the current YMAP for an officer in topless is reflected incorrectly, you may need to reach out to the applicable assignment officer. Before doing so, consider that other factors can influence the YMAP besides the MOVE criteria. They include the Married Army Couples Program, or MACP, Exceptional Family Member Program, EFMP, High School Stabilization, or a 90-day stabilization following a deployment. If after considering those impacts you still feel the YMAP is inaccurate, the unit G1 or S1 should contact the applicable assignment officer at HRC to work a solution prior to completing the unit MER. Each branch assignment officer can be found at www.hrc.army.mil under the officer tab on the top toolbar. Though the process may seem a bit confusing and convoluted, it is important to keep assignment officers informed of officers in your command. Doing so will ensure that the MER is as accurate as possible. After career managers like Captain Perez have scrubbed and updated the YMAVs of each officer in their population, the MER process can begin at the unit level. Units should consider using three steps when building their MER. First, gather the unit's strength management tools. Second, identify the requirements. And third, prioritize the requirements. Captain Jeremy Yama, an Adjutant General Officer and current account manager, will now go over which unit internal products can be critical to building the best possible MER. 
In preparation for submission of a unit's mission essential requirements list, G1s and S1s need to accurately project future strength out to the end of the upcoming distribution cycle. This will include accounting for forecasted and unforecasted gains and losses. The unforecasted gains and losses will be the key to an accurate strength projection because these are variables that HRC cannot validate in Topmas. To assist with this projection, G1s and S1s can update their field grade, company grade, and command slates with guidance from the unit commander. This will ensure that all interpost transfers are tracked as the unit moves officers located on the installation in and out of key developmental positions. These tools will assist the unit strength management team with accurately projecting future mission essential requirements and aid in positively communicating these to their HRC account manager. This preparation and active communication with the HRC account manager is critical to a unit's ability to get the right personnel into the right jobs at the right time. Now that you have gathered, reviewed, and updated your strength management tools, the second step in building a MERV is to identify the requirements. To show exactly how to identify requirements, another OPMD account manager, Captain Michael Masonette, will walk you through the steps. Identifying requirements starts by pulling the same detailed strength report by Congra that Captain Matt Perez mentioned earlier. To begin, click on the application service icon. From here, you will double click strength. Then you're going to double click detailed strength report by Congra. This report automatically takes you out to the end of the current cycle thus ensuring that you see the full needs of your unit. In this example, I'm going to search for Majors at 1st Armor Division. On this screen, you will choose either Commissioned Officer or Warrant, depending on your search needs. Then you will enter your three-digit DML or DMSL in the appropriate box. Then in Conger, select I-5 for Major. Then in Sort By, select ASGOG, which will display all the skills for which you have Major authorizations. Then select Combined to include all your possible officers. Let's take a look at 15 Bravo Majors. It appears that this unit is short by one 15 Bravo Major. After a check in the O1 Alpha, O2 Alpha, and O2 Bravo numbers, you see that there is no additional Aviation Major there. So this is a valid shortage and you should place the position on, the, on your MER for the unit commander's approval and prioritization. Let's fill out the MER file. The first column is Priority. This is the number that defines the importance of your requirement to your command relative to other requirements. The lower the number, the more important it is. This should be the last block you complete on your MER prior to submitting it. Rec ID. This field is used for units who build their own requisitions in Topmas and then have their OPMD account manager validate them. If this is you, populate the Rec ID for the position into the DRL. If this is not you, then leave it blank. UIC. This is the UIC to which you want your OPMD account manager to build the requisition for the listed requirement. This should match your authorization document. This field is especially critical for units or commands with geographically disparate locations to ensure officers are arriving to the correct locations. I will use a generic UIC. Type Whiskey Zulu 00 Zulu DML DMSL. This three character alphanumeric code should correspond to your unit and is used for running strength projection reports in Topmas. In this case, it will be DML 1AD, and then the division commander will place the officer in the appropriate DMSL at a later date. Staff section slash organization. This is an optional free text field to provide clarity on where the projected vacancy is inside of your organization. In this example, we will say division aviation section. Paragraph line. This is the paragraph and line number of the authorization on the MTO. This generic 999-99. Congra. This is the control grade of the authorization in your document. In this case, the authorization is I-5. If you would like the position filled by a grade different than the authorization, then please include this information in the remarks. AOC. This is the assigned officer concentration of the position. For this case, it is a 15 Bravo. Location slash ARP Mayo, an optional free text field to provide more information about the position. This is typically only used for overseas commands or in cases where the authorization is geographically disparate from the rest of the formation. In this case, location is TB. JDAL, this is a self-explanatory field. Its projected vacancy is in a JDAL billet. Include the JDAL number. If you aren't sure what this is, it probably doesn't apply to you. 
In this case, it is blank. Deployer. Annotate here whether you expect the officer to deploy within 12 months of arriving. This ensures HRC sends you an officer that is not dwell restricted or non-deployable. Again, this will be blank for our example. Name of current fill. This self-explanatory field allows us to easily find the officer in Topmas that is vacating the position to verify the loss or to get further information about the timing. In our example, we will type Major Jones. This is a generic answer, but we know that someone is in the position because the current strength in Topmas is 19 of 19. Loss date. When do you expect the incumbent to vacate the position? After looking at Major Jones' YMAV and projected leave, we can see that Major Jones is a loss on 1 August 2015. Rec report date. This optional field should be tied to an operational requirement listed at the bottom of your MER. In this case, rec report date is 1 July. In order to allow enough time for in-processing and a good handover from Major Jones. Topmas strength projection. This field should come right from Topmas. Run a strength projection report for that grade and skill and list the information as the number projected, by the number authorized, by the percentage fill. Real strength projection. This field should describe what reality is. If there are losses or changes that are not appearing in Topmas, usually caused by intrapost transfers, this is where you should list your true anticipated strength. If the Topmas projection and the real strength projection are different, be sure your marks will clarify this discrepancy. In this case, the real strength projection is 89%. Remarks. This free text field is used to describe the requirement more completely. Sometimes it's truly as simple as it's being a projected vacancy that is clearly depicted in Topmas. However, it is frequently more complex than that and should clearly account for all the factors that make this projected vacancy and considered mission essential. More details are better. This is blank for our example. Continue to populate your MER with true projected vacancies until you have accounted for each critical position request. Now that Captain Masonette has walked us through on how to identify the requirements, the third and final step in building the MER is to have the unit commander prioritize the requirements. After you've gotten approval from your command on the priority for each request, it's time to submit the MER to the appropriate account manager. After you submit the MER to your account manager, they will then review the product and provide feedback. To give you an idea of the feedback you will receive from the account manager, here is Chief Warrant Officer 5, Richard Scott. Hi, I'm Chief Scott. As an account manager, once I receive a MER, I'm going to look at it and give feedback on the probability that a valid requisition will be built based on Army Manning guidance and the projected strength in Topmas. If the unit is below Army Manning guidance in both aggregate strength and in a specific specialty, there is a strong possibility that the requisition will be created. Another area I will look at is the requested report dates. I will provide feedback to the unit on the feasibility of an officer arriving on the requested date. It is important to place comments in the remarks and in the major events section so I can convey those facts in the distribution conference. I will provide that feedback prior to the distribution conference in order to provide the unit one last opportunity to convey which requests are critical before the conference starts. By following the advice presented in this video, you will have sent a clear message to the OPMD team. And in doing so, you will have increased the chances of OPMD achieving their goal of precision personnel support that meets operational requirements. Thanks for watching, and on behalf of the Active Component Distribution Team, Officer Personnel Management Director and Human Resources Command, I'm Major Andy Brown, Total Army, Total Victory.